Shalom, shalom. In today's video, I want to talk to you about what these heathens are cooking up in their kitchen. Let's talk about it. praise to the most high Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, first and foremost, first thing I want to say is if you're not motivated to live off the land, to try to be as self-sufficient as possible, then I can't help you out. When you read the Bible, you are reading about an agricultural Hebraic people that lived off of the land. The Most High Yah gave us instructions for what to eat and what not to eat as Israelites. But these heathens, you see that in this video that I'm going to play, they are going to be at the forefront of trying to push their science, no matter how lawless it is, no matter how fake and phony it is they're always trying to pass off fake stuff as if it is real and that goes all the way back to their image of messiah which is caesar borgia here they are trying to pass off lab meat lab seafood and this video is going to be salmon i'm telling you like i said if you're not motivated to try to free yourself from the system, to come out from among them, I can't help you because we're getting to a point where time's running out. In one of these videos, you're going to hear them say that, uh, you know, they're working with the FDA and the FDA is not fighting this. The FDA is pretty much trying to figure out ways that they can put this uh, on food labels without people having a heart attack when they read it. You can look at the finesse, look at the Look at the caliber of people that are promoting this and see, don't you see completely left type people? Look, look at the people that, that do this stuff. Ain't no telling what kind of spirit you are going to be putting in your body, your vessel taking in their lab meat. I did another video on, on uh, them wanting to us to eat worms and all of this stuff. And it's always some sick stuff that the heathens are cooking up. Always some sick stuff. Just because you can get something to go from a, 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 a chemistry lab into a piece of beef or into a piece of meat does not mean it is beef. The Most High Yah put stuff here in its natural state. And for a long time, the heathens have been uh, adulterating and perverting stuff. And this stuff is going to cause people to be jacked up. You know, who's going to who's going to say anything once 100 percent of the meat in the store is all lab meat? You got people walking around with tails and uh, all kind of identity crisis and gender crisis. Look at what they've been feeding the people. So I'll go ahead and roll that footage with the hopes that it wakes somebody up. Because if you don't see nothing wrong with this, you might be under a strong delusion. And because you don't receive the love of the truth, the Bible tells us that the Most High Yah is the one that sent you that strong delusion. Roll that footage. This salmon fillet didn't come from the sea. It was grown in a lab to look just like the real thing. There are a lot of questions that people have. Number one question is, what does it taste like? Foods made this way aren't yet approved for sale in the U.S. or anywhere in the world except Singapore. We just need another source of fish, and, and that's what we're here to provide. All right. This is Arya Elfenbein and Justin Kolbeck. They co-founded Wild Type back in 2016. Last one. I started to think about a lot of my background in stem cell biology and wondered, do we need animals to have meat? This machine is 3D printing steak. The goal is to create a piece of meat without killing a cow. It turns out that cows aren't necessarily the most efficient way of making beef. Back in 2013, professor and scientist Mark Post unveiled the first lab-grown burger at a live tasting in London. This one patty cost over $325,000 to make. It's close to meat. It's not that juicy, but the consistency is perfect. Then scientists move the massive cells to the tissue engineering lab, where they make something called bioinks. 
because this is the beginning of the bioprinting stage, the inks that we're using actually contain the cells that we've been growing in the labs previously. There's one for muscle and one for fat. They're fed through these nozzles, and technicians can customize how much of each goes into the steak. You can print any structure that you're able to design. So you upload a, a file to the printer, and you can present a steak of, of pretty much any size and also any proportions. Simon wouldn't give us an estimate on when the steak will be ready for the public to try. 